Well, the state of the country's health system has been revealed in a new report. It reflects a worsening bottleneck and mounting pressure in public hospitals. And as the government looked to reform the health system, it is vital that those who use it have a voice in all of this. A former Deputy Chief Health Officer of Australia, Nick Hotesworth, has joined the Australian Patients Association to ensure policy makers hear those voices. And he joins me now. Dr Coatesworth, thanks so much for your time. Just talk us through what is the state of the healthcare system at the moment? Laura, thanks, thanks for having me. And it is a, a pleasure to become the Ambassador for Health Reform at the Australian Patients Association. The problem that we've faced in the healthcare system is, is not new, but the COVID-19 pandemic really exposed the cracks in need of reform. And one of the major ones is the fragmentation of care between state and federal uh, systems. And that's manifest primarily at the moment in increased presentations and weights in emergency departments. One of the reasons for that is because the cost of seeing a general practitioner and indeed the delay in seeing general practitioners is increasing to the point where the community has no choice but to present to emergency departments, which of course are, are free care and, and their state-run care. So if we're going to solve that problem, we need to find a way to improve the rates of bulk billing. And of course, one of the important ways is to uh, release the, the freeze on Medicare rebates, which, which has been released, but those rebates for GP consultations do need to go up. Uh, that is that is one small part of healthcare reform, but mm. I think it is an integral first step uh, for us to actually uh, restore that balance and, and uh, allow patients and their families to see the GP. So either way, it comes down to more funding uh, needed, whether that's paid by the, the taxpayer or paid by individuals, which is happening right now. Well, that's exactly right. And that's a, that, that is a difficult conversation to have, um, but we need to have it. No matter, uh, I mean, I suppose that there might be a, a degree to which you could increase the rebate so that everyone was bulk billed. Mm. Um, I think that's actually improbable. And even if it was possible, there's no way that the budget could afford it. So what's going to happen is that there'll need to be an increase, whether it's five, ten, or fifteen dollars on the standard fifteen minute consultation, the rebate, mm. MBS rebate for that. Uh, and that will create an increase in, in bulk billing, but we don't know how much it's going to increase uh, bulk billing. There's no uh, been no comment from the Australian Medical Association or the College of General Practitioners mm. about what an expected return on investment that will create for patients and their families. And, and I mean, I'd like to know. I'd like to know if my taxes are going towards an increased MBS rebate, then how likely is it that Australians who need to be bulk billed will be bulk billed and how many of them will be bulk billed? Well, the Royal College of GPs uh, spoke to uh, its president last week uh, and they were uh, quite critical of state governments and, and payroll taxes. What do you think about the, that argument from the Royal College? Well, it's clear that the GPs have been under an immense amount of, of pressure and, and really they were at the front line of our uh, COVID healthcare response and, mm. and enabled our world leading vaccination rates. So we've got a lot to thank our general practitioners for. They need to be at the centre of, of care in our community. On the payroll tax issue, I mean, that's a difficult one because we need to acknowledge that uh, not all GPs are, are sort of your, um, you know, corner GP solo practitioner. In fact, it's vastly different to how it was 20 or 30 years ago. A lot of these practices are owned by large corporates. And so then the question has to be, should large corporates be exempt from payroll tax in Australia? And is there sufficient uh, justification for that? Mm. Uh, and the counter argument, which from the, is from the general practitioners is that if you institute payroll tax, uh, then you know obviously some of that increase in bulk billing and, and decreasing gaps that will occur with the increase in the rebate that would be eroded. Now these are these are complicated arguments to have, but I think at the at, at the base prep proposition is should small businesses or large corporates be exempt from payroll tax? And if the the answer is no, then mm. uh, it's probably the case that they'll have to pay it.